up YouTube? In this video, I'm going to show you exactly how to get over your fear of cold calling. Alright guys, so those of you that know me really, really well from this channel know that I am not a fan of cold calling. I'm a huge fan of cold emailing, but I understand that some people simply love the phone. They live by the phone. In fact, I have five years cold call advertising sales experience. So that's quite a bit and I've learned quite a bit over time. So I'm definitely going to give you some tips and tricks on how exactly to get over that crippling fear of picking up that heavy phone. The first item I'd like to mention is do your research. Listen, if you're about to call someone up, you had better know a lot of information. Their full name, who you want to contact, how you need to get through to them, what you want to tell them, and exactly what your pitch is. If you don't know any of this information, your cold call will go horribly and it will not result in anything positive whatsoever. Do some really basic research before you pick up the phone and save yourself that heartache. Find out exactly how to pronounce someone's name, know their company, know what their company does, know exactly what their position at the company is, and prepare your pitch. Be ready for when John, or whoever it is, gets on the phone with you and says yes, know exactly what you're about to say, and know exactly how to pitch them. Simple research like this can take you miles and miles past others that are not doing research on the company. I can tell you for a fact, after five years of cold calling, people respect you that much more just because you know their actual name, title, or position, as opposed to those who don't. Now, number two is that you just have to accept that rejection is going to happen a lot. In fact, this is what drives most cold call anxiety and fear, the fear of rejection. Ultimately, rejection is just simply the person on the other end of the line not wanting to talk to you or buy what you're selling or not engage in conversation. It has nothing to do with you personally, and that's mainly the factor that people take into play and that's exactly why people fear cold calling. Listen, you really have to understand that business is business. It's not personal. When someone hangs up on you or if they reject you, they're not doing it personally. Think about it. They don't know you. They have no idea where you're located. They know nothing about you. They simply hear a voice. It could be anyone's voice for that matter. It has nothing to do with you personally. So don't take it personal and don't have anxiety about that. In my old sales job, we always used to say, they're never going to meet you. You'll never talk to this person in person. So what does it matter? All right, so on to number three. Have a plan, but not a script. All right, so I definitely realize why that might be a little bit confusing because a script is probably what you're looking for when you're making a cold call. But you don't want to be a robot reading off of a script. You want to have more of a plan. That is sort of a loose outline of what you're going to say when you get on the line with your prospect. Consider this plan as sort of a loose framework as to how the call is going to go. If you've ever heard of Jordan Belfort's straight line system, this is kind of exactly what we're talking about. You want to keep things on a straight line going exactly where you want them to go. You don't want to get on tangents. You don't want to get into other conversation. You want to get to the finality, which is really ultimately either booking a meeting, making a sale, or setting another appointment. So listen, scripts sound really, really cool. They just don't work. So you can read a script all day long to kind of understand what you have to say during your plan, but you definitely don't want to be reading off of a script when you're cold calling. That's just going to be the death of you. Like I said, in five years of cold calling, I can definitely tell you that any prospect can immediately tell whether you're reading off of a script and they will instantly sniff it out and know that you're totally full of it and it's just not going to fly. Nobody wants to get a call from someone that's reading off of a pre-made script. It's basically cooked up for them to give them some sort of a pitch 
that they don't want to hear, that's already made for them. It's literally like being sold. No one likes to get sold, but everyone likes to buy. That's why you got to ditch the script and stick with the plan. After all, your call is going to be highly unique, and you have to understand that. Every single phone call is going to go haywire. It might not go exactly how you think it's going to go. You might get on the phone with someone and they might start telling you a story. You might get on the phone with someone and they might start asking you questions, rapid fire. You might get on the phone with someone and have absolutely radio silence where there's nothing more than for you just to pitch. You absolutely have to be prepared for every single one of these scenarios. After five years of doing this, I can really tell you the only way to do it is practice, practice, practice. And I really mean live practice. I don't even mean mock practice. I mean doing this on the phone with real people, real prospects, doing it with them is the best way to get it across because you have that actual pressure. You have that actual tension, right? And once you do it for so long, that tension goes away. That anxiety goes away. And that's how you get rid of that fear. Now, number four on the list is to be persistent. Like I always say in previous videos, the fortune is in the follow-up. You have to follow up at least six to eight times to get someone to buy from you or to make a deal with you or to set another appointment with you. Whatever the objective is, you must reach it throughout six to eight times. Sometimes it's shorter, sometimes it's longer, but it doesn't matter. Be persistent always. Now there is a caveat to that. If someone or a company tells you not to call them anymore, you absolutely must respect that request and don't call them anymore. Maybe just send them a LinkedIn message. All right, how about number five? Learn to love voicemail. All right, so I don't know about you, but I personally love voicemail almost just as much as actually getting the prospect on the line. Here's why. Because a voicemail essentially allows you to dump everything you need to tell your prospect in a quick voice message that they can read and they can respond to. If your prospect does not respond to your voicemail, you get some data. They're not interested. They're most likely not interested at all. Leaving a voicemail is awesome. It allows you to get all of your message across everything you want to say, lets them listen to it, digest it, see if they want to talk to you again. If they don't, they don't. If they do, they do. It's actually like cold email, but better. One last thing about voicemails is to keep them short, sweet, simple, concise, and to the point. Basically, you just want to get your message across real quick, just enough for them to know exactly what you're pitching, what you're offering, or what you want to do as far as getting a call back or whatever it is that you're saying. Get that across in a short manner and your best bet is getting a call back that way. Now, number six to get over your fear of cold calling is to just understand that it's a necessary evil. All right, so after five years of cold call experience, I can tell you that it's not exactly the most fun thing to do in the world. I wouldn't choose it if I had a Saturday afternoon and some leisure time. But cold calling is a necessary evil, and here's why. It gets results. So a lot of times, people will not answer their phone, they will let you leave a voicemail, and they will get back to you. This is how the world operates. Same thing as cold email. Send out a bunch of cold emails, get about 3% response rate. That's how it works, right? Same thing, phone, email, pick your poison, you gotta do something, right? When you finally get a return call from someone that you cold called a week ago and they wanna do business with you, you're gonna be elated and you're gonna be so glad that you made that cold call and it's gonna make you a sale or it's gonna get you an appointment or it's gonna make a deal or further the process, whatever your goal is. But here's the deal, ultimately it is a necessary evil. However, it's necessary. Like I mentioned earlier, so many people fear cold calling is because it's uncertain. It's not certain what's going to happen on the phone call. You don't know that it's going to be just like calling mom and saying, hey mom, what's up? What are you doing? What's going on? Oh yeah, this, that. No, that's not how it's going to go. You have no idea how it's going to go. That is exactly why you're fearful of picking up that phone. 
When you can come to terms with the fact that a cold call is an uncertain call and you have no idea what's going to happen on that call, it could be a big win, a big loss, or a neutral phone call. You just need to do it. And if all else fails, just relax and remind yourself that your livelihood depends on it. Now, I hope those are some good tips to help you get over your fear of cold calling. If this was helpful, please smash that like button, hit that subscribe button as well, and that alert button so you know every single time I come out with a new video. And until then.